I'd like to extend thanks to the Alliance for Regenerative Medicine for putting on a fabulous conference. Um, so I'm with Biocardio. We're located in San Carlos, California, uh, roughly 20 minutes south of SFO, 20 minutes north of Stanford University. Um, a couple disclaimers regarding forward-looking statements, as well as uh, a free writing prospectus legend because currently we have an, an S1 on file at the SEC. So Biocardia strengths. We've been around for some time, um, and we have gone from concept to an accepted phase three pivotal trial in heart failure on under $40 million. As far as we know, we're the only phase three program for cardiac cell therapy that's actually had two previous trials and with the phase two being a placebo controlled trial. We are the only cell therapy that we know of in the clinic today with a companion diagnostic used to select patients. And we're the only cell therapy for a cardiac indication that has an approval pathway that's a PMA IDE pathway, which we think has significant advantages. We are also the only company that we are aware of that is sponsored head-to-head -head clinical trials on leading cell types to understand the strategy issues associated with safety and efficacy early in development. We began initially with a delivery technology that to date has been used in more than 275 cardiac procedures and is in use or been used in 10 clinical trials. I note that two of the trials have not yet enrolled patients and two of the trials are still enrolling to date. Um, there's published safety, efficacy, and ease of use data on this delivery platform. And to date, one element of this delivery platform, which we call the MORPH, a steerable conduit in the anatomy, is commercially available in the United States and Europe and has been used to treat more than 10,000 patients. So those are Biocardia's strengths. Like many of the folks here, we have an extensive pipeline, as you'll note here. Um, our therapeutic programs involve autologous, minimally processed mononuclear cells and uh, culture-expanded allogenic mesenchymal stem cell prep, which we're advancing in heart failure as well as in acute myocardial infarction. Those programs are enhanced and enabled by our approved delivery product portfolio um, detailed on the other um, pipeline graphic. And so because there's so much to talk about, I'm going to focus in only on the CardiAmp cell therapy in heart failure of ischemic etiology. Now this is a phase three program. It's a PMA pathway under the FDA, which means it's one clinical trial that we need to complete for approval. And fundamentally, CardiAmp involves four separate stages. Stage zero is the potency assay for the patient's bone marrow mononuclear cells. I'll talk in more detail on this, but this is really a new paradigm for some of these cell therapies. Heretofore, the approach has been to go and select out a particular cell type and isolate that cell type with significant expense and processing that results in that cell then becoming a specific therapeutic. Here, we're selecting the patients with a potency assay that have a signature of cells that enhance their likelihood of being responders. The cell collection is standard from a bone marrow aspirate in the iliac crest. We take about 60 cc's of marrow, and then the cells are processed in an FDA-cleared CE-marked point-of-care cell processing platform. The cells take about 15 minutes to process, during which time the patient is prepared for cardiac catheterization, and the cells are then delivered into the myocardium using an intramyocardial delivery platform. This entire procedure, from the time the cells are harvested to the time they're delivered and the patient can leave the cardiac catheterization suite, is 60 to 90 minutes. So the potency assay. We've had a lot of questions on what is this potency assay. And what it is, is it's a biomarker panel that we developed from our phase one and phase two clinical program, but also from clinical insights in the literature. 
There have been a number of trials that we've seen with mononuclear cells in different cardiac indications. One of the markers we talk about is the CD34 marker. Um, there's been a number of trials that we all probably know around CD34 cells in acute myocardial infarction, in chronic myocardial ischemia, and even in heart failure when they're used in conjunction with a mononuclear cell prep. And what we've done is with a very efficient delivery platform, we are able to deliver to the heart thresholds of CD34 cells that significantly exceed those in other trials. And the way that works is quite straightforward. With delivery, everybody talks about what goes into the catheter system or what goes into the device that's being used for delivery. And what's fundamentally important is what stays in the target tissue once the delivery is completed. So data that we have in our hands suggests that delivery efficiency is roughly um, three and a half fold that of a straight needle platform, roughly 18 fold as efficient as that is putting these smaller cells into the coronary arteries. And when you use that sort of efficiency of delivery coupled with the thresholds of CD34 cells in many of the major cardiac trials shown here, um, what you'll see is that the intracoronary trials, even if they deliver a very large dosage, have a low number of CD34 cells that you would expect to stay in the heart. Even intramyocardial delivery trials, shown here in the, um, the CMI trial, ACT CD34 CMI by Baxter Healthcare, have very significant numbers of CD34 cells with intramyocardial delivery, but very expensive processing around that platform. With our approach, which I'll talk through on the delivery side, and with the ability to select out um, the patients who don't have high doses of these cells with the natural variation in these cells, we can have a far greater threshold of cells in these patients. And this is just one of the markers that we're advancing in our phase three. So the, the potency assay will essentially exclude 30% of the patients. Now, in our history, we've done head-to-head -head studies with different cell types. Our phase two data, which I'll touch on, compared mononuclear cells in an autologous setting to an autologous mesenchymal stem cell prep in collaboration with our partners at the University of Miami. And where we come at looking at the data from a dedicated placebo-controlled fashion, we see greater signals in the mononuclear cell prep over the mesenchymal stem cell prep. Um, and there's support in the literature when you think about everybody in the cardiac space today delivering cells is talking about a paracrine effect. It's not the cells, it's the agents that they release. And so our perspective, influenced by the data we have in hand, is that a mixture of cells will have a broader spectrum of action. And this has been supported by work that's detailed here by Lafredo. The cell processing platform was in license from Biomet Biologics. It's a closed, isolated system that can be used right there at the patient bed bedside. It's FDA cleared, not for therapeutic purposes, but for processing cells. And it's CE marked um, with a label that suggests it could be used for delivery to uh, a surgical site. Um, this platform essentially has density tuned buoys that enable us to isolate out the mononuclear cell prep in a fashion that's identical to what we've done in our previous work and uh, enables us to deliver the, the high cell concentrations we're looking to deliver. The delivery that we do is an intramyocardial delivery. And in this, we advance a steerable sheath across the aortic valve over a guide wire, which is the safest way to cross the aortic valve. And then from within the chamber of the heart, we take this steerable catheter, excuse me, we take this steerable catheter system here and we can rotate it and point it at a target region in the heart. Pre-procedure imaging is used to delineate what the target zones are, and in our phase three program, the pre-procedure imaging is as simple as transthoracic echo. We define the target locations around the infarct zone, and then from within that steerable conduit, we advance a helical needle, which is very similar to an active fixation pacing lead. And it can be engaged with the myocardium. It's stable as the heart is beating. and enables one to control the time course of delivery in a very precise fashion. This delivery platform has been used by others in their clinical development and is available for licensing for other cell, gene, and protein um, delivery programs. 
So let me talk about the data quickly. Our phase one trial was a 20 patient open label trial. These patients had ejection fractions of less than 40%. We were looking at New York Heart Association class one, two, and three patients. So this is basically a great safety data set. But what we see when we look at the data is we had significant benefit in the ejection fraction or cardiac mechanics. We had a reduction in the end systolic volume. We saw an improvement in exercise tolerance that was statistically significant. And since we have long-term follow-up data, we can see a reduction in mortality as compared to historical controls. So it's a phase one data set, but it's a phenomenal data set. And if you note, if you think about heart failure, yes, it's an open label trial, but the delta in survival at the three or M point that Novartis looked at in their great drug that just came to market, we're seeing a delta on the order of 30% where their drug, the mega blockbuster is a 2% reduction in mortality at three years. Again, it's an open label trial. Will this hold up? Uh, we will find out. So our phase two program, as I mentioned, the TACIF trial compared head to head mononuclear cells to mesenchymal cells. And here I'm gonna talk through just the data in the arm of the mononuclear cell prep. And I'm gonna focus in on the patients that are treated in the head to head placebo controlled blinded fashion. So the primary endpoint of this phase two was safety based on treatment emergent MACE at 30 days, which we met with a 0% MACE rate. Secondary endpoints are detailed here. And you'll note that we're listing here the treatment difference between the placebo and the treated group. Interestingly, we had statistical significance in two endpoints, six minute walk, an approvable endpoint, and Minnesota Living with Heart Failure Questionnaire, which is often of most import to the clinicians um, in this small heart failure trial. But it is a placebo controlled trial. And if you look at the data more closely, what we're seeing is the patients that are treated in these two endpoints, these two secondary endpoints, those that are treated are improving, and those that are not treated are deteriorating, which is what you would expect normally in heart failure. So the phase three trial that we're advancing is a 250 patient trial. It's New York Heart Association class two and three. We're staying away from the New York Heart Association class fours in part because of the comorbidities and complexities associated with class four. Even in cardiac transplant, which you could argue is the optimal cell therapy for cardiac repair, they will often not have patients um, receive hearts until they've been stabilized with left ventricular assist devices. So the comorbidity is one of the reasons we're staying away from the New York Heart Association class fours, but also because of the um, inherent complexity of trying to change from phase two to phase three. So we're repeating our phase two data in our phase three program. And the phase three has hierarchical endpoints where the primary endpoint is six minute walk. If we hit that endpoint, we roll down to the first secondary endpoint, which is non-inferiority with respect to survival. And then it's non-inferiority with respect to MACE, Minnesota Living with Heart Failure Questionnaire. Those first four endpoints, we actually met in our phase two program. Then we move to superiority with respect to time to MACE and superiority with respect to survival. We don't expect to have to hit anything beyond the primary endpoint and the safety endpoints to see an approval from the agency. So this is the last slide I have here. And this sort of puts a snapshot on how we compare to the other two phase three programs. Biocardia is a point of care cell processing platform that is done in a one-time therapy. We've got two clinical trials behind us, and the second one was a phase two randomized placebo controlled trial. Um, we have 250 patients to enroll in this trial, and we're hopeful that we'll enroll first patient as early as the end of this year. Thank you.